Good, uh, good morning, everybody. It's great to be here. I'm joined by uh, my colleague, Mark Schutz. Uh, he's going to help me. We are going to show some AR in action. Um, and I'm going to start by just recapping a little bit of some of what we heard yesterday. I particularly enjoyed the, um, the panel discussions uh, focused on uh, AR in the enterprise. Uh, at PTC, we are really focused on industrial enterprises. And we're spending a lot of time thinking about the value of augmented reality across the breadth of the life cycle of both products and operations. Um, and on the chart here, you will see um, some of the use cases that are resonating with, uh, with industry. And when I talk about resonating with industry, PTC has over 28,000 companies that we do business with, and over 1,000 of them, 1,000 individual companies are deeply engaged with us in augmented reality. They are part of a pilot program using some of the technology that we're about to show you. They're giving us feedback, they're participating in forums, um, and they're giving us great insight into the real world applicability of some of the things that we're all thinking about and talking about. So there's lots of value across the life cycle. Um, Mark, if you go to the next slide, uh, I wanna show a particular example. This is the video that, uh, that didn't work for Jim yesterday, and this is showing a, um, an operate use case. So it's showing a lab technician who's using this machine. It's a, it's a blood analyzer in this case. And um, there's some issue with the machine. It needs to be cleaned. So on, it's a smart connected machine connected with our ThingWorks technology. And he initiates a cleaning cycle that's automatic and fails. Now in the past, what does he do? He picks up the phone and he calls a service technician. But using the power of augmented reality, he's able to actually perform that basic service procedure by himself. So once he says, show me how, he scans a marker, call that marker a thing mark, and then it steps him through what needs to be done, beginning with turning off the machine. He can't do anything until he turns off the machine. And then it provides step-by-step -step instructions on how to clean this aperture. And as you can see, it's very clear, it's very intuitive. Any one of us in the room could, could, could repair this machine and get it back up and running. The technician, lab technician, is very happy because his machine is back up and running, he can do his work. The company is very happy. They didn't have to roll a truck out to take care of this customer. And they can actually, they've, they've almost doubled the number of customers that each service technician can take care of using connectivity, IoT, as well as augmented reality. So that's just one quick example of the power of augmented reality in the industrial enterprise. But it's not easy, okay? All of you in this room, all of you watching know that there are challenges here. In order to create examples like that, it takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of sophisticated developers, sometimes complicated, very powerful but complicated tools. It's very difficult to incorporate existing engineering assets you may have. It's very difficult to incorporate data from your IoT systems in many cases. And there's this, this question, we heard it a lot yesterday, um, what app do I use with what thing? So those are some of the challenges that we've been thinking about in the development of the technology that I'd like to show you. This technology is called, go ahead, is called ThingWorks Studio. And ThingWorks Studio is a tool that we have built for content creators that want to create augmented reality experiences without writing any code. Easily reusing 3D assets they have, incorporating animations, and incorporating data from other enterprise systems. Okay. Now, the way that it works is you do some authoring, you publish that experience up to the cloud, and then you consume that experience, you have the experience using something, something called ThingWorks View. Now, to show you what ThingWorks View looks like, I'm going to go ahead and open up my, uh, switch the display to my iPad here, and uh, you'll see it in the lower right-hand corner. As I mentioned yesterday, this is available to all of you to go download. It's free. It runs on iOS, it runs on Android, and next month it will run on Windows tablets. Uh, later this year, it will also run on the HoloLens. And when I open up ThingWorks View, the first thing it says is, okay, show me a mark. What do you want to experience? Out at our desk in the lobby, you'll see something that looks like this. This is the welcome experience thing mark. So when I scan this, it says, okay, you're new. You'd like to know what's possible here, and there are a variety of uh, experiences that are provided in this gallery. I'm gonna start with the welcome experience. And the welcome experience is gonna take me through some of the capabilities that ThingWorks View provides. So we have this nice KTM motorcycle. 
Uh, we have, um, if I click on the arrows on the right hand side, you'll see that there's various things that we can do with this motorcycle. I can spin it around. Of course, I can move around it. I can zoom in on it. Um, I've also got some uh, nice pre-built um, animations. So for example, how would I disassemble the front wheel? Okay, well here's a pre-built animation that we're, that we're providing to show you some of the capabilities there. And then also in this getting started experience, we show you a little bit about what IoT data might look like using virtual sensors that are presenting information like the battery level and the fuel level for this particular bike. So all of that's pretty neat. That's a nice tabletop experience. Uh, but what I'd like to do is I'd like to show you how easy it is to create experiences like that. So I'm going to plug Mark's Surface back in, and he's going to do all the heavy lifting here. And we're going to show you this is ThingWorks Studio. So this is the authoring environment. On the left-hand side, we have a variety of resources, image files, 3D files. We have the, pal or the canvas in the middle and a palette of widgets. And then we have properties on the right-hand side. And instead of showing you a tabletop experience, we're actually going to use this coffee maker here. I know we had a little trouble running out of coffee yesterday, so we brought our own today. Um, but we're going to use the coffee meter, and we're going, to, we're going to show you how to create an experience. So we'll begin by bringing in some 3D data. So we're going to start by adding a 3D model to the experience, and we're going to actually reuse some CAD data. Now, engineering CAD data is very high fidelity. It's built to do very sophisticated things like manufacturing and CFD and analysis. But in this case, we really only need to trick the human eye, right, as, as, as we just heard. We only need to, your brain's going to do a lot of the work, so we can radically simplify that geometry. Uh, we have an example we'll show you at the end with a caterpillar generator that is over 1.2 gigabytes of CAD data that you do not want to download to your mobile device. We reduce that to less than 10 megabytes, somewhere around 8 megabytes, in fact. So massive compression automatically happens for you. Um, now, the, the next thing we need to do is we need to pr put, a, put a marker on this, on this machine, right? Just like we have one, you might not see it over here, just like we have one on the coffee maker, we need to put a thing mark here. This thing mark is going to do two things for us. It's going to provide unique identification, there's encoding around the edge, and it's going to provide AR placement. And Mark is placing exactly on the model a thing mark just like this one. In fact, it's the exact same one, which will be associated with the experience that we're creating. And once we've done that, what we really want to show is combining the digital and physical worlds. We want to show you some step-by-step -step instructions. And you can see under the sequence URL there, we don't have any sequence defined for this data set yet. So let's go create a sequence, OK? In order to do that, we're going to use a tool called Creo Illustrate. This is a tool that we originally built for technical illustrators to communicate step-by-step -step instructions and technical drawings, which in the past would be displayed in a movie or in a 3D animation you would look at on your screen. We're using that exact same technology, but we're using the new medium of communication, augmented reality, to present that in more meaningful ways. Now, Mark has already defined some of the steps for how to operate the coffee machine here. He's going to go ahead and so he's already defined how do you open the machine and put the cup in. He's going to show you how you actually make the coffee. Close the machine, press the button. And what you'll see is he can do things with highlighting of the geometry in different colors, translating it, fading it in, fading it out, really clearly communicating step by step what needs to happen. And What's great about this tool is that it's a tool that understands engineering data. It understands product structure. It understands that when you grab a subassembly, you probably want to move the whole thing, not just the bolt that you happen to click on. And it's also um, very intuitive to use. We've sort of taken a Microsoft PowerPoint animation kind of, a, kind of approach in the creation of this tool. So we've gone ahead and we've, um, we've, we've closed the cap. And we're, we're, the last thing we do there is we highlight the, uh, we highlight the power button. So Mark's going to go ahead and save this procedure, save this sequence. Um, and when we, when we publish this, we actually don't want to see all of that geometry. We, we have the geometry here, right? We only want to see the things that are going to be moving around that are interesting to us, the things that we want to augment. So he's going to hide all of that other stuff. Very easily, just, just, just turn, that, turn the display of that stuff off. We'll save this procedure. And we will go back into the studio environment where we will use what we just created here. Now, we've saved this with, um, with, the, with the 3D data set. And back in this environment, when we update the data set, you'll see under the sequence, we now have what we just created. OK? So we're going to, we're going to associate that animation with this data set. Now, if I have my experience right now, the only question is, how will I start this animation? 
well, I need a little bit of, I need a little bit of user interface, right? And we also want to make sure that when we, when we have this experience, we want the physical geometry that I have to occlude the geometry, the geometry that's being augmented. So Mark just selected on the, the base there and said use that for occlusion, okay? Now what we're gonna do is you'll see at the top we're in 3D, we're gonna switch to 2D. This is the 2D plane of the experience. This is the screen of the iPad, if you will. So on the screen of the iPad, we want a button. So we're gonna plop that. There's a nice grid here. You can do all kinds of layout controls. We're gonna put a nice little icon of coffee on that, on that grid. You just, we, we give you a whole bunch of icons. You can add your own. You could just put text there, whatever you like. And then we're gonna associate the action of clicking that button to playing the animation, okay? That's it. Now we've created our experience. Now what needs to happen is this experience needs to be published to the cloud. So this experience is gonna be published to Mark's server. Mark has his own server. Again, all of those thousand other pilot customers have their own. Um, he's going to publish that up to the server, and then whenever any one of you went up to this particular thing, Mark, with ThingWorks View, you would be presented with this experience as a potential option. So I'm gonna, we're gonna wait till that go ahead and finishes publishing. Now we're, we're using the same Wi-Fi network that you are. Um, so those of you that are tweeting are causing us a little bit of traffic, but that's okay. Um, so that, that completed its, its publication. I'm gonna plug in my iPad here and you'll see that display momentarily, okay? And again, I'm gonna go back into ThingWorks View and when I scan this marker, it says, ah, there's the coffee maker from AR and Action Experience. And when I select on that experience, what's happening is the experience that Mark created is being downloaded and presented here for my consumption. There could be authentication. I could be challenged with a username and password. We haven't put that on here, but you could control it in that way. And when I select the button in the middle of the screen, you'll see that animation sequence that looks pretty familiar being presented to me right here. So here's how the cup goes in, here's how we close it, and we add our cup, and the power button, the brew button, if you will, is pressed up there, okay? So when it comes to um, the value of AR, I think everybody here is, is, is getting, their, getting their heads around that. The really important point that we wanna make is that it's very, we're making it very, very easy to create this stuff. Now we've shown you a nice example. We brought this example because frankly it's easy to bring here. Most of our industrial examples aren't so portable, but I wanna show you one last video. And this video shows an industrial example. It's the Caterpillar generator I mentioned. It shows not only step-by-step -step instructions, but it shows IoT data being presented as well, which is just as easy to incorporate, actually maybe even easier to incorporate. And it also shows not an iPad, which is easy for me to demo with, but it shows the display on a HoloLens. So here we have this uh, portable generator. The doors are open and we're looking inside. You can see the fuel level and the battery level. That's live data streaming off of this connected machine up to the cloud and presented back in the experience. And then you'll also see in the back there we have an air filter. And we're showing the technician how to open up the air filter, remove the cap, rotate the filter out, and pull that out for a replacement procedure. All created with ThingWorks Studio. Thank you very much. Hello, Great.